Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show, Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. Hope you guys are doing well. Happy holidays continued. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year from all of us here at the Gym Masters Show. All your friends, all the loveities here behind the scenes at the Gym Masters Show. And of course, me, your host. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope the holiday season has been a beautiful one and continues to be for you and yours. Thank you very much for joining us. It's really hard to believe we are uh, inching up on that 900 episode mark in just two and a half years. It's extraordinary with all these incredible guests we have that come in from Hollywood and Broadway, television, film, music, stage, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, and everything in between. It's really been an incredible experience. And also with all of you, our audience watching from literally all around the world, it's so cool to have you here. Thanks for all the great comments. Thanks for all of the positivity. Thanks for all of the uh, messages we get on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at Gym Masters TV. That's where you can find me there. Leaving comments on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. That's where we house these hundreds and hundreds of extraordinary episodes, these great conversations that we have with our fabulous guests coming in from all these different backgrounds and levels of success and, and celebrity and more. Again, I hope you've uh, been enjoying a really beautiful holiday season. It's a fantastic time to be with family and friends and to take a minute or two to remember what's really important in life and the simple things in life, as well as we embark on the new year and continue celebrating the festivities of the holiday season as, as we've been doing as well with family and friends and absolutely love. It's one of my favorite times of the year because of the fact that it's so family oriented and everybody is in a more jovial spirit. Kind of wish that that would continue throughout the year, but uh, hopefully at least here at Lovety Hall at the Gym Masters show, we sort of sprinkle some of that vibe your way as we do this series with uh, all of you watching around the world. Gang, if you would like to comment while the show is on, if you're new to the show, welcome. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, uh, and click the notification bell so you never miss any of our fabulous episodes. You'll get notified uh, every time we have an episode, which is basically every single day. Uh, but if you would like to comment right now and say hello to one another, you can do that. We have the JMS uh, Lovety Hall chat room. And that is a chat room we've designed when the shows are airing that you can chat in and say hello to each other and even say hello to us. We might even see a comment or two of yours uh, as it's happening, which is kind of cool. You can you can actually chat right now in that chat room if you'd like when you subscribe to our YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is Gym Masters TV. That's the channel you're watching this series on right now. So if you subscribe, we say thank you. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to the YouTube channel at all. Uh, but it does allow you to be a part of the JMS Lovety family, and you can chat right now in the JMS Lovety chat room. That's really cool. Yeah, I know you guys really love that. Hey, we've got some amazing guests. Yes, we always have so many fantastic guests for you. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking guest guests. We have real guest guests. We have two guests, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and you'll see what I mean in just a second. We have Nicholas and Pamela guest. They are extraordinary actors, actresses, casting directors, producers. There isn't anything you probably have not seen them in. Nicholas is a respected actor and uh, Pamela is a respected actress. She's also a casting director. They both cast and produce and they're very engaged in, in the entertainment world in an extraordinary way. And they've been doing it for a good number of years. As a matter of fact, as we have them here on the show, I wanted to let you know that um, Nicholas's credits are extraordinary. Matter of fact, you may recall him playing Margot's husband. Um, and she, of course, that is Julie Louis Dreyfus. But this is the classic holiday film, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, that we're talking about that Nicholas uh, was in. And there is a shot from that movie. And yes, that is him. He was in that classic movie, Chevy Chase and Company. And uh, the iconic role, of course, was Todd Chester. And that's uh, Margot's husband. And the classic holiday film, you've probably been watching it this week anyway, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Nicholas uh, was in that. And that, of course, is a legendary, legendary movie and a hilarious movie. If you've seen that, you know what I'm talking about. It's also in uh, Trading Places, too. 
as well. Yeah, if uh, you recall uh, that fantastic movie. And there's again, another great shot there for you as well. And in addition to that, it was also in Star Trek. Yes, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Probably remember that as well. Mm -hmm. There's a shot of him there. And something real. And also, here's a few more we want to slip in. Morella, The Long Riders, of course, guest appearances, which we're going to talk about as well, both Pamela and Nicholas uh, with her daughter. And also, Astro Boy, yes, Scooby-Doo, Batman, Boss Baby, and Penguins uh, Madagascar. These are just some. These are just a few. And, uh, and Pamela, well, she was the casting director for Patty Hearst, that iconic movie. Yes. And she played the teacher in Married on FX, as well as, of course, being a brilliant casting director. She was a casting director for Blue Velvet. She was she played the lawyer in Nuts with Barbara Streisand and Richard Dreyfus. Yep, she's a, as much as she's a wonderful casting director, she's a brilliant actress uh, as well. And also this fantastic movie, the first of many. We'll talk about that as well. This is something really near and dear to Pamela's heart. Uh, Nicholas is going to be starring in the Netflix murder mystery two. You know, of course, the murder mystery one, right? Well, Murder Mystery 2, he's going to be in that. Adam Sandler and uh, Jennifer Aniston, of course, you're seeing it on the screen. Uh, that is a Netflix original. That's going to be happening as well. So it's really exciting. So, so Nicholas is joining us. Pamela is joining us. And they're joining us direct from uh, Los Angeles, California. Also want to let you know that Nicholas has also been in Mad Men and Sons of Anarchy, Madam Secretary, fabulous series, MacGyver. Uh, numerous animated voices in The Call of the Wild, The Good Liar, Lady and the Tramp, X-Men, Dark Phoenix. He and Pamela are also car starred in the award-winning web series, guest appearances written and directed by their daughter, Elizabeth Guest. And as I mentioned, he's coming in the Netflix upcoming sequel, Murder Mystery 2, co-starring opposite Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. He's also an Academy and BAFTA member as well, member. And... Um, Actress, producer, writer, director, and activist Pamela Guest co-wrote and directed the multiple award-winning short film, The First of Many, which premiered at Cannes, based on true events in Pamela's life. We'll talk about that. She also has continued her activism and founded the Los Angeles Sexual Harassment Prevention Committee of SAG-AFTRA, and she currently chairs that. She's also a speaker of RAIN and PAVE and VIA, all organizations dedicating to helping, dedicated to uh, helping survivors of sexual assault. She's also currently working on a documentary featuring casting couch survivors, which is being considered for inclusion in the Smithsonian Women's Museum. This is just the short list, folks, of the extraordinary things that Nicholas and Pamela have been involved in and continue to be involved in. Uh, they're very, very giving people, and they're also very inspired people as well, as much as they are great entertainers. And we're very excited to have them here exclusively on the show. Again, if you'd like to chat during the show, feel free to do that in our JMS Levity chat room when you subscribe to our YouTube channel. But without further ado, live and direct from sunny Los Angeles, California, although they say it's a little nippy, 50 degrees nippy. Not bad. <laughs> it's about 38 here. <laughs> All right, gang, here they are. Let's welcome Nicholas and Pamela Guest to the show. Welcome, guys. Thank Good you. Good morning. Good morning. Here. I don't know. What is it? Is it afternoon where you are? It is lunchtime here. Yes. <laughs> lunchtime. All right. So how are you guys? Happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah and happy new year as well. How are you and how's your holiday season going? I would say that it's great. One of the great things that we now have is a grandson. So oh, congratulations. Nothing else matters. <laughs> right. He's two and a half. Right. And two and a half now? Yeah. And we What's his name? Luke. 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 Wow. Just tell us what to do, where to sit. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He's in charge. Uh, he's in charge. Absolutely right. <laughs> and that is basically, you know, I think that that's what makes this particular holiday season wonderful 
Very, very special, right? Congratulations. That's that's beautiful. What a talk about one of the best gifts that you could have, you know? That's 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 an ultimate gift. Congratulations. A lot of joy and blessing uh in the family during this time of the year. Now, are you guys pretty much winding have you winded down since it is holiday time from production and all the work? There's a, there's still some voiceover work going on, and uh, you know some of the things you mentioned were voice work was voice work, but that's fine. I mean, I just that's one of my absolute favorite things to be involved with, um, and I got involved with that fortunately many many years ago, and it's just it it it's a wonderful wonderful experience every time. It's, yeah, because you can play anyone, you know. That's yes, the beauty of it, you're free. And you certainly have some of those uh, roles that you've had in these animated uh, productions are pretty cool, huh? It's amazing because you can be the voice of a character yes. uh, in an animation, cartoon, a, a video game, and that's a whole other audience. And it brings in a whole other fan base when they find out who the voice of that iconic character is or characters. And that's a cool experience isn't it it really is and and it's a wonderful sort of ensemble you know when pre-covid actually now we go into separate booths at, at uh, studios and everything but there's a green room where we all you know are with each other and uh it's an incredible group of people that do this kind of work my one of my very first jobs i uh, was playing i think a french spider in the in the it was animaniacs i believe um and this guy who was next to me, he was like a, considered one of the greatest of all time. Um, he was going to be playing a dog, but he wanted to know whether it was a collie, a bulldog, you know, what a chihuahua. I mean, he was able to do any bark, any, you, you name it. So he was very inspiring that first day. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> can you imagine being on a bus with him and he's making these sounds and then he makes the sound and looks away back at his newspaper. Be like, are we, do we hear a duck on this bus? Is there a, he could probably even do the mouse. <laughs> I mean, what are we hearing on the bus? And everybody's looking around on the bus and he's just sitting there quietly reading his uh, times, you know, <laughs> can have a lot of fun with that. How are you, Pamela? Um, is everything sort of uh, winded down for the holiday season and then sort of gears back up in the new year? Well, that will happen, but it hasn't quite happened yet. Like yesterday, I spent the majority of the day at the RAP Power Women Summit, where there were a lot of speakers. The Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton and her daughter spoke the day before, and a lot of really big luminaries in the in the industry women were there talking about the power of women and um so that was a very full day and now i expect things will wind down a bit although there's still screenings for the for the oscars that we can go to with parties and stuff and that's very fun and that will probably wind down next week but we may or may not we don't know yet you mentioned guest appearances which is the um the, the web series that our daughter writes and directs. Well, now she's writing the movie. And oh, so it's com becoming a movie, huh? Yes. Yeah, so there it oh, is. There and, it is. But we are possibly going to New York to shoot one of the, uh, the beginning of the movie. So we don't know yet, but that would be between Christmas and New Year's if we go. So. Tell us about that uh, web series for folks who haven't had a chance maybe to check it out yet, uh, what it's about. And congratulations, <laughs> this has been Elizabeth's, uh, your daughter's baby and you guys involved. How did it all happen? Uh, how did you come up with the idea? And uh, what's the process been like? And, and what is the whole series about? <laughs> well, um, okay. So if they want to watch it, it's uh, guestappearanceswebseries.com. And they're all there. They're two seasons worth. And how it happened is that she was in a class, an acting class, and asked to write a monologue. So she wrote a monologue about all the different dating experiences she'd had, which have been myriad and complex. <laughs> <laughs> is that why it's a series versus a one-off? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So she, you know, tells the tale with, you know, a, a comedic spin on it of her life in the first season. And, um, and we play her parents, obviously, with a spin on that. I don't want to re reveal too much. Yeah. And uh, 
then that she took that and entered it in film festivals and she won the Austin Film Festival with it and a number of other and I think the Nashville and anyway and it was a lot of fun to do and it's always great when you get to be with your kids you know yes. but your your daughter and who's such a creative genius you know and she's such a strict director for us you like to tell that story I do I mean she's a, a brilliant director and with us, she can be entirely honest. So I remember- <laughs> So watch out. <laughs> I think one of the first scenes was done in our kitchen, you know, and um, I, I said the line and she said, you're not really gonna say it like that, are you? <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> the other thing she does is she tapes us for stuff, you know, for auditions, auditions and everything. Yes. And she said to me the other day, I don't want you, I don't want to do this with you unless you're fully prepared because I'm very busy. <laughs> wow. She's right, you She's know, right. because, yeah. you know, you can get lazy and I'll just wing it. No, no. she can stand for it. <laughs> wow, isn't that incredible? It was incredible humor. Yeah. So, that's right. So, so she keeps you guys on your toes. She does. She does. She does. Wow. I mean, she's part of that generation. You know, she's in her very early 30s. And, you know, we don't relate to a lot of that stuff because we're old, you know, yeah. but she's very plugged into the zeitgeist of being a young person in Hollywood. So it's very, it's interesting. And it's also universal in that, you know, all these young kids are going through what she's going through. You know, well, not all, but, you know, yeah. you know it's very I tell cute. I tell people when they say that they're old, I say, you know what? Try this. So instead of saying old, how about saying you're seasoned veterans? Yeah. Oh my God. We love, I like that. I'm going to use that. I am a seasoned veteran. Yes. <laughs> In fact, they changed the name at SAG for one of the, the senior committee to seasoned performers. See, yes. Yeah, Isn't that, that great? Seemed like we were salted it's or peppered. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is funny. That is fantastic. So, uh, Nicholas, you know, you've been doing this a long time and you've been in so many iconic uh, movies and television shows and so much more uh, growing up in uh, New York. How did you first get started in the business? Who, who introduced you or what were some of the inspirations around you that pointed you in the direction of wanting to go into this line of work? Well, my family, I mean, we were around people who were in the business. I mean, a lot of people, of the people were literally like relatives, you know. Um, yeah. Growing up in New growing York. Growing up in New York. Yeah. Um, Eli Wallach, for example, was like a, an, an, an uncle. uncle. Yeah. He really was. Yeah. And uh, later I, I um, got to know Alan Arkin, who became somewhat of a mentor for me. Oh, right? yes. But the woman, one of the greatest actresses of all time, who changed my life. Um, I was going out with her daughter, actually. Uh, this was in the 70s. And she said, how would you like to uh, come on tour? Uh, Anthony Perkins is going to be directing me in a play. And um, wow. well, you know, and I had a small part, but it was bliss. So for 10 what? weeks. Do you want to tell him who she was? Her name was. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was a tease, brother. He was he was doing a buildup. He wanted to do a nice buildup. Not, not allowed <laughs> to mention her name. No. Her name was Maureen <laughs> Stapleton. And she was the... Did the oh, wow. performances in Tennessee Williams plays, the Rose Tattoo, and everything. Yeah, legend. Yeah. And she had talk about humor. She was brilliant. Yes. Very, very funny. Yes. Uh, what was this? You mentioned Connecticut earlier. I think the first one of the first theaters where we performed was the Ivoryton Playhouse. Isn't that a great place? It's still yeah. there. It's beautiful. Yeah, I think that's where Catherine Hepburn did her first uh, professional performance. It's possible. It would be, yeah. And it's only about 20 minutes from where her estate was, which still mm -hmm. exists in old Saybrook, Connecticut. And they also have, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the Kate. They have the Catherine Hepburn Performing Arts Center That's in right. old Saybrook, Connecticut, dedicated to her. And there's, a, there's an area that's like a shrine to her incredible career because she was originally from Hartford, Connecticut. And she always stayed uh, in the area and had this beautiful house in the Fenwick section of Old Saybrook that jets out into the Long Island Sound. And uh, I believe her brother lived there as well. And really just a fantastic um, place, Ivoryton Playhouse, really wonderful. Yeah. Well, you indulge me, I have a story related to that house. We were, oh, oh, yeah. we were invited to that house. Who was we? 
we, the cast of the show that I was doing with Maureen Stapleton, right, uh, to come to her house. She was not. I love there. Pamela. She likes to. She wants all the facts. She wants to. Who is we? The critical in my life for so many years, and this one being Pamela is writing all these things down. Who's <laughs> we? There's going to be a discussion later after the show <laughs> about all the we's. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so uh, the cast of the Marine show, we went over to um, the home, this estate, as you beautifully phrased it, and her brother was there. Whose brother? Catherine Hepburn's brother. Thank you. <laughs> and he greeted us and he said, there'll be lunch and so forth. And we went into one room where there were approximately 60 hats that she had worn over the years. Catherine, I mean, she an exquisite setting but there was one amusing moment uh in which the brother invited us to go out onto a boat <laughs> this is a little strange and we declined um simply because we felt suddenly as if we were in a sort of hitchcock movie it didn't feel quite <laughs> safe <laughs> and so we didn't but we stayed in the house and then years later i actually had the incredible experience of doing a play reading at Catherine hepburn's house you know uh, brownstone she lived in in new york city and that with was, her with her there you and go. kate reed one of the great broadway actresses was there and uh, anyway wow. that was an extraordinary experience absolutely yeah and uh the house i believe i believe they're a new york couple that purchased the house uh in the oh. estate in old saybrook uh, and it is there <laughs> yeah i remember yeah wow yeah. Really, really beautiful. Uh, and it just jets out into the, uh, she's got all the property and it just jets out into the uh, Long Island Sound, which is absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. Great, great story. Great memory there, huh? Shoes. So uh, what was one of the very first things that you did in the industry, in the arts, Nicholas? Do you recall? And was there a, a yes. moment that was a pivotal door opening opportunity for you that once once you did that people started noticing nicholas's talent and your you know everything started rising for you well i just want to uh, stick with that particular production for a second because um as i was saying well i didn't say right i didn't say that um but all along the coast we were performing so people of that time would come to see the play uh, Harry Belafonte would show up. Um, Cyril Richard, who was the original mm -hmm. Captain Hook, they the, all of these people would come back stage to say hello to Marine. It was just and so I consequently I met these people. But one of one on one particular occasion, uh, Walter Matha came to see mm -hmm. them, and he said, "Can I talk to you for a second? Mm -hmm. you have a little chat with me, right? What are you doing with your foot?" And apparently during the I was nervous. It was my first show. I was doing something strange with it. He said, "Straighten out, the, straighten out the foot. The foot. Ah. Just keep that foot straight. You know, anchor it." And then uh, Alan Arkin came to see it, and he said, um, "At a certain point, maybe not now, you'll be able to just be in the mm -hmm. character, just on the stage." You'll be. But it was so kind the way he shared this with me. And then the first really kind of fun part. I got to work with Alan Arkin. I was playing um, a Russian in a, in a wonderfully done uh, TV movie called The Defection of Seamus Kudirka. Mm. Alan was playing uh, the defector. It was a true story, too. Yeah. Uh, and so um, I was working with him, and I just had gotten to know him. And uh, he said, I know what you're doing. Your character is doing this. What do you mean? He said, I know what your character wants. I said, what? He said, a promotion. <laughs> that's what I could get from what you were doing your work and I had actually worked on that aspect of things so he yeah. he was very oh. involved in he was a teacher he still was. yeah absolutely would you say that when uh, Walter Matthau was giving you that great personal advice about you know straightening out the foot would you consider that him giving you a, a leg up <laughs> <laughs> very clever or did, he, or did he think you were a shoe in 
<laughs> and I have to say, I've been with this man a long time. I've never heard that story yeah. of the foot. I don't know why he kept that from me. I don't know. Uh, he yeah. feels very comfortable here on the Gym Master Show. Oh, we make it comfortable and warm and conversational to uh, share anything that you hope yeah. to share. That is a great story, huh? And the other thing, of course, is that to have worked with Anthony Perkins was extraordinary. In yes. addition to being, you know, the actor he was, he was a brilliant musician. So we would arrive at That's right. stages and he would go to the piano mm -hmm. and entertain us. Um, and also incredible humor. You don't think of humor because of Psycho and all these things. Yeah. But um, I was, needless to say, uh, didn't know what I was doing. And we, the first performance, actually, one of them was in the round. You know, and then we got to where it was in Philadelphia. I said, are we still in the round? And he said, he pretended he was Norman Bates for a second. Said, <laughs> We're no longer in the round. <laughs> like, no longer in the round. Yeah. 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 Was cool. That is funny. And that's the thing that I think from the very beginning that became so clear is that there has to be humor. Otherwise, why are we doing this? I'm a big believer in that. Absolutely. That's just something that is for me, even in, you know, the most professional of environments, it's still, if I can find a way to lighten it for everybody. And it's very connecting too. When you're, when everybody's laughing, they're, they're everything's equalized. Everything's connected. The ice, you know, the armor comes off, the ice melts. And I'm always looking for ways to, and I think I get that from my dad, my, Irish dad from New York City, uh, the humor just always growing up and the, the one liners and just we could be in a supermarket line and the things that he would think up uh, and uh, he could do one act plays just observing what he was seeing going on in front of him. And he's he's that's what he's like. He's still like that. And, and I do the same thing. I could be on a train and, and I'd be like. Now, do you know what she's really saying to him? Do you know what he's really thinking? Do you know what those two are really? And it'll be like a whole thing. And it's like observer of life. Mm -hmm. And and I like to feel things too. I'm a, I don't just want to pass through. I like to feel it. And I think that's very connecting as well. And, and doing what you do, I mean, you're a lot of people, you know, are touched by the work in so many different ways on so many different levels. And that's, that's really hard to script that feeling that you get when people watch what you do, appreciate what you do. Like I tell people, you know, for me, it's, I'm not, you know, some people, they, they crave the love of the public. Um, for me, it's really the respect of, I prefer the respect of, I mean, if the love comes, that's fantastic. I love that. But if not, it's not something where I have to have to have the love of, it's more of the respect of and appreciation for what we're doing. Uh, that seems to matter to me a little bit more. Um, how about you guys? I think so. I just wanted, to, um, before I do I love your work. <laughs> <laughs> I just I had one of my first significant agents was very honest, which was also fantastic. And I asked him if he had enjoyed a certain thing I'd done. And his response was, ugh, the worst. <laughs> and I had a similar experience with having done something in LA and going back to my New York place. And the doorman said, That was terrible what you did. Go to the corner and get me some coffee. And I was happy because there was that. <laughs> that free open thing let's not pretend you know what i mean right you think i was going to believe that you were that character no way you know right and it's bliss when you have that you know yes exactly right <laughs> absolutely you're serious so, about what you do so no respect you guys no respect is a, is a good thing because then you can try harder the next time there you go no respect and it doesn't sound like any love either <laughs> <laughs> also helpful <laughs> How about you, Pamela? How did what was your entree into this uh, crazy, nutty, but glorious world of the well, arts? I grew up in Akron, Ohio, watching old movies on TV, and it, most of them—not most, but some—set it in that glamorous, glamorous world of showbiz in New York. You know, there's several of them, and I just wanted from the get-go to move to New York and be one of those glamorous actresses. So uh, anyway, I, but 
you know, I was in Akron and I then went to the University of Michigan and I studied drama there. And then came the moment when I got to go to New York. Finally, when I graduated, I was terrified. I knew no one except a couple of kids that had been in college with me. And um, uh, we auditioned this girlfriend of mine and I for um, Uta Hagen, one of the famous acting teachers at the time. And the reason I went to New York was James Earl Jones, who's a Michigan grad, came to um, our, I was getting my master's degree there and he did a seminar and I raised my little hand and I said, if you were me, would you go to Los Angeles or New York? And he said, go to New York, that's where the good teachers are. So that's what I did. And I, I was lucky enough to audition and get into Uda's master class, learned a great deal there. And then I segued to doing moving furniture and answering phones at the famous actor's studio. And um, at that time I auditioned and didn't get in. And lo and behold, many, many years later, very recently I auditioned and now I'm a lifetime member of the Actors Studio, which I'm very proud of. And I continue to work on my craft there. Anyway, so um, being around in New York, all of those wonderful actors and watching the process and sitting in on Lee Strasberg's classes at the mm -hmm. Studio was yeah. incredibly inspiring and just made me want to keep going no matter what happened. And, you know, I was off to a very slow start professionally, although as a result of being around the actor's studio, I was cast by Ilya Kazan, the famous director of On the Waterfront. And yeah, yeah all those wonderful movies with Brando. And anyway, I was cast by him in The Last Tycoon as Robert De Niro's secretary. <laughs> And for me, this was, you know, this was actor heaven. He also asked me to show up with, with Bobby, as we called him back then. Yeah. And improvise, help him improvise and get into character. So we did that for three weeks before the movie started shooting. I would go to Paramount Studios and go in the gate and, you know, the gate from WOW, all those old movies. And there I was, and they were building the set of his office around us. And speaking of humor, he was very funny with me and we would laugh and, you know, we didn't really <laughs> get into the character. But then when I came to the set to do the actual job after they'd been shooting for a couple of months, he refused to talk to me. The one thing he said, as I encountered him leaving the makeup trailer, I was going out and he was coming in and my hair was short and in these little, you know, 1930s kind of pin curls and not very attractive. And he looks at me and he goes, why did you let them do that to you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh no. And then he never spoke to me again because he was my boss. He was a shy boss, if you remember that character. Yeah. Gerald novel and then the movie and so that was kind of sad but it was a huge acting lesson of how he works which is to stay in character the whole time you know which many actors do that and so that was very inspiring anyway so I like to say I started at the top and went straight down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> no but the, that's also the humor of Pamela you know I mean she's, yes. and and she's humble and she's brilliant and older. Yeah. she is I am really <laughs> oh, I she's not disagreeing with what you're saying she just said i am what i am if that's what i am then i am what i am i love well, that i do want to say though you that guys are funny the addendum to that is uh, because my acting career wasn't happening i started working in a restaurant right by the gate of paramount called oblast and I was there and I was very depressed all the time because I wasn't working. And lo and behold, who would come in every day but John Cassavetes, the very wonderful indie director and actor. And, you know, he would say, what's the matter? I said, I'm depressed. I'm not working. And he said, well, Jenna Rowland's his wife. She said, you're going to work when you're older. She didn't really work till she was in her 30s or 40s. I can't remember what he said. But anyway, he said, uh, he then had me and a bunch of actors work on these scripts with him, reading them out loud. And he became a fan of my acting work and put me in a play in 1981, playing Jenna Rowland's daughter and uh, the sister of John Boyd's character. And that was a, a real pinnacle of my work as an actor because he wrote a whole scene for me, a monologue um, that I then was able to execute based on what I had been doing, working on the character. And I still hold that as a golden memory in, in my mind of what it is to be an actor. And he, he and Kazan had two things in common. They, they, well, one thing in common, love. 
as you were saying, you know, they would love you into a performance. You know, I would often see Kazam with his arm around De Niro, so whispering in his ear, you know, kind of giving him direction that way, which then he would do with me. And Cassavetes was all about love. If, if you're not loving what you're doing, don't do it. You know, yes. and in fact, the plays that we did, there were three of them were called Three Plays of Love and Hate. Mm. He wrote one of them, Knives, with um, Peter Falk. It was the star. And then Voight and, and Rollins were in one called Love Streams, which then became his last independently produced film. And that character that Jenna played was my character, Older. And he always said he was going to make my the movie of my character, um, and then he died. Hmm. So that was that was too bad, but you know I I have the support in my mind of him, you know, which uh, is beautiful, I, right? To take the spirit with you forever, absolutely. Yeah. You know, you uh, you also got a chance to uh, play the lawyer in Nuts with Barbara Streisand and Richard yeah. Dreyfuss. Tell us about that. Well, that was three weeks of work at Warner Brothers. Also, every time you I would go on a movie uh, studio, it's just bliss because you know that's where all the magic happened over the years anyway so um she was also one to be very much in character and if you at that picture that you're showing on the screen is very indicative she plays a what we all think to be a crazy person but she isn't you know she's very smart and you know it was um it was interesting i saw her you know being concerned about what her image was on you know on the in film and she would often hold a light uh, mirror up to see where the light was hitting on her face. And so that was interesting because I'd never paid any attention to how I looked on camera, but I saw her doing it. And I thought, well, yeah, she's smart, you know? And, uh, you know, it was a kind of a contentious set because I think at that time she had also directed Yentl maybe before or after it was getting ready to direct. So she was, I don't know if I should say this, but I will anyway, that she was very criti critical of Martin Ritt, the director. I would hear them fighting, you know, um, and that I didn't know you were allowed to do that or that you should do that. You know, it was a very kind of uncomfortable thing, but you could attribute that to her character who's very feisty and fighting the whole legal system, you know, and what, what she was trapped in. So, and Richard Dreyfuss was charming. And um, I think I did a couple of things with him. I was also cut out of, um, down and out in Beverly Hills, I played a cop in that. And then, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, they cut me out of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> but you also played a teacher and married on uh, FX. That was so fun. Um, <laughs> yes. And we got to improvise a lot. And uh, yeah, that was Judy Greer, who's on Reboot, is um, uh, now currently on Hulu, is, played the, the mother of this. You think that I'm. <laughs> It's a funny scene, but you think that I'm uh, the uh, their shrink because the the couple is arguing in front of me and talking to me, and it turns out I'm the the kind of guidance counselor of their child. So oh, I really right. need to know about their sex life, <laughs> you know, which is what they're talking about. It's a very funny scene. Yeah. <laughs> casting director too. You both are brilliant casting directors. You can never cast. I don't know. It's a misprint in our bio, I guess. He casting was, directing. I had hoped to, but they re <laughs> they rejected me. Uh, Did they reject you? <laughs> <laughs> he will give me ideas when I'm casting, That's and true. I I routinely reject them. Right. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is funny. <laughs> what if you want to know about casting? You can't. Nick can't. What? <laughs> I didn't do any. Well, of that. you uh, you yeah. cast Blue Velvet. Yes, that was something. David Lynch and I talked about our dreams every day at lunch because he, uh, much of Blue Velvet came from a dream of his. And uh, the very first version of the script was very dreamlike and made very little sense. And the people then who put money into the movie made him, you know, make it more like a traditional story. And um, so he. Yeah. And, and also uh, Patty Hearst as well, too. That was fantastic. You know, yeah. Paul Schrader, one of the fun, you wouldn't think this from his work, but Paul Schrader, the director, and yeah. he didn't write it, but um, is one of the funniest people on the planet. He's yeah. very smart and very funny. And, you know, he did Raging Bull. He did um, Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver. Yeah, he wrote Taxi Driver. <clears throat> so you wouldn't think he was funny, but he's very funny. And um, we cast in New York 
and Los Angeles and got to, you know, discover some really great people like Bing Rames, who has had quite a career, Natasha Richardson, who left us way too early. She yeah. first. Uh, one of my closest friends, Francis Fisher, remains a close friend, played and Jody Long, who's now the president of the Los Angeles local of SAG AFTRA, was in it. Um, and I forget all the rest of the people, but it was very fun to do it because I was in college at the time um, of Patty Hearst. And that was kind of it's kind of my era, you know, so it was very fun to populate it with people, you know, that I. People have always found her story fascinating and her so fascinating her just her background and why would she yeah. be involved in this and just very fascinating story. Yeah. Yeah, it is. The movie went to Cannes that year and I went with it and uh, got to meet her because uh, she came to, you know, to open the film. And she's a very nice person, very unassuming person. Right. You know, you would not ever cast her as this character. You know, it just it is a fascinating story of how someone can be turned, you know, in um, that Stockholm syndrome kind of way, which wasn't even a thing. I don't think before that that people talked about, you know. Right, exactly. And it's really fascinating. And I encourage folks to, to watch it. Something else, too, Pamela, that I know is near and dear to your heart is the first of many. Tell us about that. OK, so um, I had I don't really want to trigger people, but I had at my very first audition a very. I guess what we would have come to call a me to experience. Mm. And this was when I was still in Ann Arbor in school. And um, I didn't deal with it, didn't tell therapists, locked it away uh, as most, or not most, but some, well, I would say the preponderance of people who experience some kind of abuse or assault uh, do. And um, I had, I decided because, you know, as I've said, my acting career was not taking off. And this was many, many years later. I decided to write down just to get it out of my head what exactly had happened that day in that terrible audition. And so I wrote it down. And then as I had um, helped our daughter produce, why am I talking so much? But OK, I'm going to stop and then you get to talk to Nick because I don't like to talk very much about myself. But anyway, but I will uh, since you asked. So you're doing a great job. <laughs> It's very articulate. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's also hard. You are to what you are. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So anyway, so um, I wrote this down and then I was helping my daughter submit her, her um, web series to different festivals. And I saw that the Amsterdam Film Festival had a screenwriting uh, component for short films. So I thought, you know, I could put this into Final Draft, which is the um, the you know, the screenwriting software and maybe submit it. So that's what I did. It took me, I don't know, maybe a couple of hours just to do that, to put what I had literally put down had happened that day into screenplay form. I submitted it and it won second prize. And so my daughter, the filmmaking, wonderful actress that she is, said, mom, I want to make this film and I, we have to do it soon because I want to play you. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So we started putting together her team from, um, from the guest appearances season one. And we decided to film it, and which we did. And we finished in the spring of 2017. I submitted it for the Oscars that summer. Mm -hmm. It was screened by all the members of the Academy prior to the Weinstein revelations in the fall of 2017. And there's one of our friends who runs a very big film company who saw it at the time and said that, that my film showing what happened to me kind of was the precursor for this whole movement within the industry because many people saw it. And what it is, is it's just from my point of view, we cut before the horrible thing happens, but then you see what happens to me after. And, um, played by Elizabeth, our daughter, who is such a brilliant actress. And so you feel her, her naivete, her innocence, meaning my innocence as a, you know, as a 21 year old, is, which is when it happened. And it was very healing for me as a person because as I was watching the scene of her after what happens happens, I really understood that it wasn't my fault and that I got off my own case 
and I began to heal, you know, and then I was in a position to, to start committees at SAG-AFTRA and do the kind of work that we've come to know as the Me Too movement. Which is extraordinary work. As I mentioned, you've continued your activism and founded the LA Sexual Harassment Prevention Committee of SAG-AFTRA. You currently chair that as well. Also a speaker for the RAIN and PAVE and VIA and also organizations that are dedicated to survivors of sexual assault. And you're working on a documentary featuring casting couch survivors that's being considered for inclusion in the Smithsonian's Women's Museum. Yes. Congratulations on all that. What? Congrats. Well, we'll see. Yeah. It's a very early stages. There's some footage that has been shot by a wonderful documentary team that, you know, they're going to allow me to use if we can figure out how. You know, I, I mean, the thing about it is there's the stories are even all the the um, the details are different, but the essential stories are the same, you know, of of this problem. And in fact, I was sitting in on the Weinstein trial that's ha happening currently in Los Angeles. And it's amazing how the stories are the same. You know, I was not assaulted by Weinstein, but I had my version. Many people have their version in their their lives all around the world, you know. But the essential dynamic is the same, you know, of assault and power and, you know, and I don't know why I'm telling you this. <laughs> why am I telling you this? Um, there was a point and I've lost. Oh. I don't want it to just be um, re reiterating all these stories. There has to be a bigger, larger point to the film, you know, if people are gonna sit through these these things, you know? So I, I haven't quite cracked that yet. You mm -hmm. know, there is a kind of fatigue out there for this problem known as Me Too. I mean, there's jokes about it and, you know, people are fed up with it. You know, in fact, there was one actress who was complaining that the whole Me Too movement had had ruined the fun and the flirting on the set and was essentially ruining show business. And, you know, um, so it's a fine line to walk of doing things to help people and annoying others, I guess. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. On, on many different levels. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, well, congratulations on all that you are doing, you know, and uh, it's it's beautiful work that you're doing, Pamela. And I know it really speaks to your heart and soul. And, and Nicholas, you too. I mean, <clears throat> extraordinary things that you've had an opportunity to be a part of. It is, of course, the holiday season, and you can't have that without National Lampoon's uh, Christmas holiday. How did that come about for you? <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I uh, actually, there's a, a story there. I, I, I was asked to audition and I went to meet with uh, the director, Jeremiah Chechik. I don't know if he remembers it this way, but I started to read uh, for him and he stopped me and he said, you would never say it like that. Mm. And I said, actually I would. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me a little strangely, of course. You don't really do that normally, you know. You don't yeah. talk back to you the don't director. refute what the director has said <laughs> in an it's, audition if I, you want the job. I don't it's a remember. little of that New York spunk, I think. <laughs> After I thought, good job, Nick. You know, great, great, great. I was walking across us. I uh, may be Warner Brothers. I don't remember. Yeah, where. Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. It was indeed. <laughs> but forget it. And then I was called back, and my my little theory is that if I had said, "Oh yeah, you're right," I wouldn't have gotten the part. There mm -hmm. was a thing in his mind, oh, this <laughs> horrible person, jerk. this jerk, say jerk, <laughs> jerk uh, <laughs> now in my office, and he might be right to play this person who doesn't like animals, children, you name it, you know. Yeah. Jerk. The yuppie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, then I came back and I did read with Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and that was just like effortless. Because, yes. As we know, she's a master. And uh, then I was told that I had the part, but then somebody else was going to suddenly do it. So I had to live with that for about 24 hours. I forgot that. That's right. And then they yeah. said, no, no, he, that actor felt it was too small a part. And I said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> anyway, I was ecstatic. And it was really fun. Actually, I just saw him in passing because I didn't have any scenes with him. But I had done a movie with Randy Quaid, uh, The Long Riders. And uh, that was an amazing experience too with Walter Hill. 
And Chevy Chase, I had met many, many years earlier in New York a number of times. And it was an incredible experience. I mean, and what was great is that director, Jer Jeremiah Chesky, knew exactly what he wanted in each and every scene. Mm. Uh, there's, there's, that's rare, actually, when you have a director yeah. in charge and you feel safe, uh, but you are, are also free, you know, not, not to improvise, but just free in your behavior, you know. Exactly, so, yeah. It happened, it was very, it was, you know, it was one of the best experiences of it. It's become an iconic movie too sometimes you never realize you know with the incredible cast and just oh, everything what it would turn into be you know it's kind of like that movie a christmas story you know that has become a cult classic for people as well as much as you know it's a wonderful life and some of the others it's mm -hmm. like there's these movies that people want to see during the these times of the year which is really something special and sometimes you don't even realize that as you're doing it that it's going to become that right not at all. We didn't know. But one thing is that and I didn't get to meet him again because I had uh, was not in scenes with him. But my very, very first acting teacher was in it. And do you remember him? Bill Hickey, who's, in, who's one of the grandfathers, right? Or the uncle. The uncle, excuse me. And the squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. He was my very, very first teacher. And he was brilliant. This kid got up in the class and started doing Shakespeare. And he said, what are you doing? And um, he said, well, I thought that Shakespeare, you knew him? <laughs> and, said, and I thought, I want to be in this profession. I mean, like, he was so incredible. Yeah. And you ever see Pritzi's Honor? Mm hmm He was, you know, like the godfather. You know, yeah. Cookie. Very similar. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, so. And what a, yeah, the cast was remarkable. And we didn't know at the time that, you know, it would be what it became, but the very first screening or the opening that where we went and saw the movie, we went, yeah, this is it. Yeah, is it was magic. Yeah. I remember Doris <laughs> Roberts was there and mm -hmm. she was kind of smiling. So who knew? No one knew. Yeah. You, um, you were fantastic in the role. I mean, you really took on that uh, sort of snarky, yuppie character. Um, when they when your neighbors saw you in that movie did um, they treat you differently as a result after <laughs> no i mean the thing is like people just love the movie so it's actually really nice and uh, you know um, he hides that jerkiness yes exactly <laughs> Well, people when they <laughs> when they realize who he is. Are his hands like tied down? Did you tie them down, Pamela? Is that yeah. what's happening? <laughs> I'm, they're tied down for be expressing <laughs> with. <laughs> you know, when I say when people meet him, they ask him to say the iconic line. Yes. Do you want him to say? Which is no, but the thing is, like I, that I know. happened. Come to on, me. that wasn't. Funny. I don't know, Margo. But yeah. on on a plane once, I was sitting with this. <laughs> she, you do it, and she filmed it. You know, sent it to her mom. You know, it's it's it's, it's been a, a good thing. experience. Yeah. So when Pamela is looking for the scissors, and she asks you, Nicholas, where are those scissors? I put them in the drawer, and they're gone. I don't know, Pamela. Exactly. <laughs> you call me Margo. Margo, yeah, Margo. <laughs> it's true. That is it's yeah. so much fun, of course. To play. Oh, yeah. From the get go, it was fun to play villains. Yes. People, it's much more fun, quite frankly. Yeah. Oh, you know? Everybody says that. Exactly. Yeah. You you mentioned uh, Long Riders as well. Tell us about being involved in that. Um, well, it was it was thrilling because uh, what happened with that is, you know, uh, Walter Hill and the, the producers and everybody, they wanted to really, really just cast real brothers. Yeah. You know, gangs and uh so um there were also similar to the christmas vacation thing there were brother actors who felt that the four brothers that the, those parts were not as big as the, they would have wanted you know like carradine and those guys had the big big parts uh god he was brilliant david carradine but in any case um yeah. so uh my brother and i uh, were brought in and i was sitting outside i was terrified i'd done very little and I was so nervous. This is another example of how this kind of thing works, is that as soon as I started doing the scene, they were laughing. Now, this is not like a comedy, but they were laughing because the nervousness was such a great thing to have, 
you know, in the scene as opposed to being like slick and, and villainous or so, and so forth, you know. Uh, and so that came through and they said, which doesn't happen anymore. They said right then and there, welcome aboard, which was and then it was unlike today. Also, it was something like 11 weeks of work. And there was uh, it, we all became another cliche, but it was really true. A and family. Did you shoot? We filmed in Georgia, briefly in Texas. They were in, in L.A. as well a little bit. Uh, I didn't go to Northern California. They did that as well. And I also had the good fortune of uh, staying in touch with Keith Carradine, mm. who um, recommended me for the Madam Secretary part that I did. During the Russian right. Festival. But I worked with Keith the other day. We actually did a reading with Peter Jason, who was also in The Long Riders, a wonderful actor. Mm. Mm movies um a, a, it was a, a reading of a christmas carol uh, to raise money for poor kids and so forth so that was a great experience you also know, it's, it's wonderful to have known these people for yes so, a beautiful feeling and to do good things you know for good mm -hmm. causes you know? for good causes as well a another major and classic of course anything to do with the star trek franchise but star trek 2 the wrath of khan Tell us about being involved in that. Well, I, I mean, it was a tiny part, but again, it goes back to this thing of in those days, once you were on the movie, yes, I was on it for, I think, seven weeks. And I, I think I had one or two lines, one of them being Shields Collapsing Captain. And yeah. It was leading up to when I knew I was going to have to say that, I literally like was, please, please let me say it so we don't have to do it again because it had to be said very quickly, you know? Yes. Please let it come out, you know, smoothly, so to speak. It was funny. But um, it was a great experience. And again, it became like a family uh, playing Scrabble with all the, the main actors. I mean, it was just everyone. It was just an incredible, uh, you know, and Meyer is a brilliant writer. He had written... Um, the seventh percent solution. Mm -hmm. Alan Arkin was in that. And yeah. He regaled, he just told stories and everything. It was a very different time uh, for filmmaking. Now it's like, okay, let's get this shot. Quick. It was like there was downtime, there was, you know, storytelling. And craft, I had craft services was really good. And <laughs> I did want to inject when Pam was doing the brilliant uh, short film that she did with her daughter Elizabeth. I was asked to be involved with uh, craft services, and I failed. <laughs> really? How did you fail? What did they want you to do? Yeah, I was not paying attention. Like, where are the drinks? What's happening with the cake? With the, this, and I was just like off in the corner talking to some. But so yeah, I, he was distracting other crew members with stories, <laughs> just like you're hearing now, like you're and hearing. not doing his job of providing I the failed. food, the I snacks. Do not ever, ever, if anyone's <laughs> listening, hire me to do the to do stuff. anything but acting. That's right. <laughs> Which is what happened actually. As I was studying with people like <laughs> Bill Hickey, Stella Adler, I was working at uh, Bantam Books and uh, kept getting promoted because I couldn't do sort of menial things. Ultimately, I was like reading scripts or reading books and writing a little comment about them but they said get him out of the filing area get him out of this area he's he doesn't know what he's doing and so that further directed me uh, and i had to act i was the only creative pursuits creative pursuits yes Cre creative pursuits exactly which uh, of course there were many i mean so you're not necessarily doing the craft services but <laughs> trading places yes huh uh was a magical thing. I had met um, John Landis a number of times. I'd done some voiceover work with him too. And he said, and that doesn't happen now either. He said, okay, you're in the movie. You're going to play one of these guys, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. then this was the, really the most thrilling thing that happened. We were filming uh, at a lot of this armory building. Do you know it on upper? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it has great acoustics, which is part of the story. So one day the actors who you just saw the four of us, um, that were, you know, the jerks, again, uh, friends of uh, Dan Aykroyd, were in the bathroom. And we started, just for fun, to sing. And we were harmonizing. I don't remember what it was. And John Landis walked into the bathroom and said, that's funny. Write a song tonight and we'll film it. So Robert Curtis Brown, who's in the in the middle there. Yeah. Is Neil Neen? Uh, no, no, that's okay. the John Bedford one. Oh, but right, anyway, right. Robert Sorry. Curtis Brown. We put together lyrics to Love Me Tender, you know, and the song. Oh, yeah. 
And we came out and they just spent hours filming the song. And so we got a uh, credit for writing credit for it. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. incredible. So that was a thoroughly enjoyable experience, yeah. huh? And again, all the old time actors on that were just like, yeah. and they were so kind and, mm -hmm. and you could see the professionalism. They were always like on their mark at it. I mean, there was a sort of respect, you know, um, and I had that experience with John Gilgit and Peter Ustinov also on the movie where they were just always show up on time and just ready and, but great humor again. Peter Ustinov told me that he was at an airport once and somebody came over to him and said, I don't know if any, the audience knows who he is, but he was a Renaissance man. Uh, oh, a he, legend. Absolutely. Yeah. He was in Spartacus. He wrote, he did. <laughs> the point. Anyway, the point is that he was humble to be, to put it mildly. So he was at the airport. I think it was in Minnesota. And this guy came over to him and said, Mr. Ustinov, I know you, you're in pharmaceuticals. To which he said, well, I'm not in pharmaceuticals per se, although I admire pharmaceuticals. And he said, I knew it. I remember seeing you at the pharmaceutical conference. Great to see you. <laughs> he didn't have to say who he was. Is that fantastic or what? I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, absolutely. Is that fantastic? <laughs> <laughs> Little did that man know. <laughs> Who he's right. <laughs> Not a pharmaceutical. Not a pharmaceutical so. person. Yeah. I think Julie Andrews had a story too where um she was somewhere um I think with her daughter and uh there was this little girl that was um there was something in the window that was promotion for Mary Poppins and <laughs> the 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 little girl um no actually it was two there was in the story of a little girl this one is, is even funnier there was these two women that were looking at the this mary poppins display and they said something to um to julie andrews like gee you know this is really fantastic and and we love her and she's amazing and all the rest and uh without realizing that she's talking they're talking actually to julie andrews they're talking about how great mary poppins is but they don't realize they're actually saying it to That's julie cool. andrews <laughs> and um and then i think her daughter said something like um Oh, well, my mother, you know, was in, in that movie and they're like, oh, isn't she a cute girl? She thinks her mother's Mary Poppins. Um, <laughs> so Meanwhile, she was, uh, you know, classic yeah. Mary Poppins. Uh, but sometimes that happens. Yeah, that happens, uh, you know, on so many different levels. Morella there was something else, too, that you're involved in. Tell us about that. Well, a friend of Pam's actually, he and I had got along and he said, okay, you're in the movie. So I did that. <laughs> it seems like you had a lot of that. Like, hey, you know what? Uh, stop by on Tuesday, you're in. Yeah. And All of which, like you said, doesn't really happen anymore in that fashion. And we worked at the same studio. I had done a show called USA High. I played the British headmaster. That was a great experience. For also. three years. For three years. Yeah. That was that was an amazing experience. Um, uh but he asked about Morella. But Morella, I mean, it was just, it was a lot of fun. I love, my dad was British, so I love, and I love playing Brits. You know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, what part of uh, England? Uh, he was from London, and we oh. went there every other year, basically. And, you know, uh, he was around, and yeah, so that was, and he was very funny, you know. Very funny. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. By uh, the Masters family, they originally hail from uh, England, from Yorkshire. Yeah. Oh wow! And then they uh, moved over to the states, and they settled in in New York, in Manhattan, and they own jewelry stores in Manhattan. Wow. And then they spread out from there. And then, uh, my I'm the fifth James, actually, going all the way back. And so people ask me all the time, "Is Jim Masters really your name?" And I'm like, "Actually, it is." Mm -hmm. And I didn't make it up for TV and radio. It's the real deal, and it's James, yeah. and it goes back to England. And uh, and then my father's father, my father's mother's side, they hailed from. Ireland and they settled in New York 
and then moved out to Astoria, which at that time was Irish Italian. Mm. And my father grew up right around, you know, new Tony Bennett, uh, who was like two blocks over and just really an amazing thing. But uh, yeah, it's um, so you're in touch with the British roots, huh, Nicholas? Well, I mean, it's just been a great thing for, you know, for voiceover work and for yes. as well. Um, yeah. Is I, Guest uh, a British name? Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's actually Hayden Guest. And uh, so my, uh, well, okay. So my uh, father's father was, who's actually a member of parliament. Um, and his father, uh, my, his father's name was Leslie and he was a doctor and a member of parliament. And then Leslie's father, was a Hayden guest, you know, that proceeded. Um, and Alexander was a doctor. He actually came over and was a doctor during the Civil War. But anyway, there's a whole <laughs> history there. I did get, get to meet my grandfather, Leslie, which was exciting. But Peter dropped the Hayden. Peter, a right. lot of people uh, shortened names when they came over to the States. Yeah. It's become yeah. my middle name, but my brother Anthony uses it as his last name with a hyphen, which is actually what I can do. I mean, technically. Uh, yeah. so He's a very, very successful um, journalist, writer, just yeah. cartoonist. Yes. He's, he's in his 80s and he doesn't stop working. And he's there in England? He's in New York. Yeah. You know? Oh, he's in New York. Wow. And he, and he loves New York, actually. Yeah. Do you miss it? New York? Yes, we miss it all the time. I mean, we love the whole, obviously, you know, what we love is going to the theater and then um, jumping in a cab or going off to various restaurants with friends. I mean, it's a, it's a whole way of living, you know, that doesn't exist in, in LA. It's not that, you know, cause it's because of the walking and yeah. the nearness of everything, you know, the energy, there's a certain oh, wonderful New York is so wonderful. And I, I have, East coast energy. Yeah. To, and to and the, authenticity too. Yeah. Authenticity, yeah. Exactly. Like that doorman who told me that I was terrible. In the middle. <laughs> I love that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is that or was he was that authenticity or is that audacity? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, in 2018, I got to, I was a small part, but I was blessed to be on Broadway with Brian Cranston, and it yes. was cool because in network in network because I would take the subway. Oh, uh, yeah, incredible. Wasn't yeah. that fantastic? Huh? Yeah. He he's he's amazing as oh, well. Thank you. If you could throw anything at him and he will become it as well. He's extraordinary. From Malcolm in the Middle to oh. the network to everything else. And he just... created this incredible eight months of just bliss of a family. I mean, no arguments, nothing. It was just this really, really happy family you know, in the show. And so uh, he I didn't mean, say I'm mad as hell, I'm not gonna take it anymore. Anything <laughs> because I was switching periodically at little things, so my curtain call would be switched around a little bit and one night it was like i was seen from a, a chaplain movie or um where i started to go out um by mistake and i was go effectively going to be joining him for his curtain call he was the star <laughs> and he whispered to me in his writing said, not now nick <laughs> and i retreated oh, right look at him to laughter not not to, he's a genius he is and, a, and absolutely. such a nice man so nice yeah yes yeah, very affable and and even the roles in breaking bad which was a whole other to be able to pull that off in the way that he so did yeah yeah absolutely how did you like being in mad men oh that was well another british part it was just so much fun and um the actor uh forgive me but he's brilliant he's jared, the, jared harris harris um, who's you guys are a terrific tag team. Richard, Richard. Sounds Richard. like pretty soon we're going to see the two of them doing charades, folks. Stay tuned. Exactly. Sounds Secretary like Richard, Richard Harris, right? Who was the son of, right? But anyway, he was great. I, I mean, I just had basically I had two phone conversations with him, and he stayed in his pajamas off camera for me. I said, I said that was so nice. Well, yeah, course, that's what's done. That's what we do. And then we ran into him another time, and he was just so warm. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful actor. Wonderful actor. Yeah. Again, like Ryan Crass, you know, very warm. And uh, uh, I mean, these are pe pe people this who is... are like ensemble players. Do you know what I mean? Mm, yes. It's the whole star thing. You know, Sons cool. of Anarchy as well. Another incredible one. The key thing. I was sitting with Pam. Uh, you've met Pam now. <laughs> yes. Hi, <laughs> Pam. <laughs> Hi, you haven't said anything lately. 
<laughs> but Pam and Liz, who we spoke of earlier, our daughter, we were sitting at, actually at Universal. We were having some lunch. I guess I'd done a voice thing. Or, I don't know what. But yeah. anyway, I got a text um, audition for Sons of Anarchy for the voice, you know, for the, the narrator, right? The, of the dead dad. Of the dead dad. And so I said, yeah, maybe I'll do that later. And they said, you will go now and record it at that studio now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> That's yeah. You will go now. Yeah. So I raced there. Fortunately. You raced there quickly. 10 yeah. minutes away. Or else. And or else. I was maybe the first or second person that the producer or director heard and went, yeah, let's just go with that guy. <laughs> if I had waited like an uh, idiot, yeah. like a jerk, uh, <laughs> yeah. would not yeah. have been in the mix. But the, not. You know, so we loved the series. Yes, we did. And so he, you know, much of it revolves around his character being dead, you know, the, right. the, the Charlie Hunnam character who would read the journals and Nick would do the voice of the journals, right? And anyway, so at one episode we're watching and there's the tombstone of Nick's character, who, you know, because these are journals that are read posthumously right and it's nick's birthday on actually the on the tombstone we went ah oh, uh, you know meant to be yeah totally meant to Crazy. be so he was Crazy. jp is that your character yeah, john teller I think. yeah john teller yeah you even got to be a chance to be in macgyver huh macgyver was a fun part i was uh playing uh, a rich you know creepy guy i got to drive a, a bentley um and uh yeah i mean just and I, again, it was just fun playing one of those parts. And it was, it was, uh, the production values are great on that. You know, they yeah, really, really like really doing yeah. it. And, um, and uh, Madam Secretary is another I, fantastic I, series. Yeah. Oh, I had so much fun on that. I'm like, it was incredible. It was hard though. The, the, the Russian. The you Russian was Russian. hard. I had a Russian tutor in New York, uh, that came to, you know, our apartment and, uh, trained me and worked with me and everything. Yeah. So that was an amazing experience. And all of those, uh, everyone on that show would, couldn't have been nicer. You know? um, and our favorite, uh, who Liz followed, you know, the, the director, actor. Girl. Yes. Um, uh -oh. Sounds like um, he, was he was in the in movie, Mask. The Mask. Mask. With the red hair, opposite share. Oh. oh, yes. Right. I can picture him. So, so Eric, well, I had done it, and I said to her, <laughs> so, it's like you want a game show. <laughs> <laughs> press the buzzer, quickly, press the buzzer. <laughs> I, in, in passing, asked uh, Eric Stoltz, I think, if Liz, our daughter, could follow him directing one of the episodes. And he said, yes. yes. So she, that was a fantastic experience. They call it for, shadowing. Shadowing, yeah. 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 So she went into New York, and she... She met him in the subway and he just like dropped off his daughter, really down to earth person. And then they went to the set and she learned the whole process oh, yeah. of directing. But that, what's the one where they drown you in the toilet? That was, uh, oh, that <laughs> was that? Uh, CSI exactly. Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, very glamorous business. You have yeah. to be in the toilet. You That's know, how my drowned. character was killed. Yeah. <laughs> I personally yeah. liked it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and better uh, that than to have a career in the toilet right <laughs> so they placed me in a wetsuit in this very very large tub of sorts and uh the main actor said uh are you okay in there and i said yeah all right <laughs> see him in the toilet I later became it. friends with the guy who supplied the you know all of the, the costumes of these very funny man but um yeah wow. those are the things you do Yes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. It's glamorous business. Yes. Toilet, Writing. Et cetera. <laughs> Even uh, voice work in uh, Boss Baby, huh? Yeah. I mean, there these are there are many things that I, I'm brought on with. Uh, I've become I belong to all these sort of basically improv groups, and we're brought in to to revoice parts and to add stuff, and it yeah. it's, we do it in different languages. It's so much fun. Uh, and we take turns and there's no ego. For example, if I try something and I go, nah, it's not really good for you, Nick. So-and-so should do that voice. So that's like an even plane. And it's it's just so, again, as I was saying earlier, it's so free. Do you yeah. feel like a kid sometimes too when you are doing these characters? You become a kid, oh, yeah. a 10-year-old version of uh, Nick again? After school, uh, starting I think in about maybe seventh or eighth grade, 
with friends, I'd get together with a little tape recorder and we would interview each other as, as different people, you know. That's so right. what's happening in the city? The city, everything is going, you know, it's getting crazy these days. I don't know what's going to happen, you know. Yeah. You know, so we would just pretend we were other people. I bet your little cassette recorder was probably one of those little Panasonics. That's what I had yes. <laughs> yes. with the little microphone. And I was interviewing and chatting and early on as a kid, right? That's absolutely correct. That little Panasonic. Um, this is coming up too. Uh, Netflix. Uh, this is Murder Mystery 2. So Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. Tell us about that. That's exciting. Yeah one where we were brought in to do the voices and so forth so that's yeah. yeah and and that's and actually that was during covid so we were all at home working from our respective uh closet slash booths uh to bring you know more life to to scenes and that and that's that's been an extraordinary thing um yeah uh, the 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 ability because of the technology to work from home and that's where our daughter liz has been a champion and literally saved us because she's like, for these senior people that you're looking at, uh, no, not in the, not, not in in veterans, Pam being <laughs> rather young, but, um, <laughs> but anyway, so Liz is like our engineer, you know, she said, you've done it before. I don't have to be here. I said, you know, you never know. <laughs> so she's been incredible, you know. Is yeah. that how she says it too? Yeah, yeah. you've done it before. Do we got to go over this again? <laughs> you know, you know, I've, got I've got a car in the driver that's idling. <laughs> exactly. Get, get, get to yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. She'll say, okay, I'm going to go for a walk. Uh, text me if there's an issue you know, with the with the recording process you would have think she grew up in new york <laughs> it sounds very new york the way you has think. that toughness which is a good she thing yeah. there was somebody that she has in her show right where she starts to argue with her and she starts yelling back oh, at yeah. them yeah. yeah i don't need this nonsense get, the, <laughs> get yeah. out of my way yeah. Oh, you on the East Coast, we say those things at least once a day, minimally, oh. or they will realize then you're not from the East Coast. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's it. Keep it moving, folks. Keep it moving. Keep that traffic flowing. That's clear true. it out. Clear it out. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, my father has always said, and I used to hear this as a kid, and I'm like, what? Uh, you know, if we're in a line, and uh, the line is just like stagnant, you know. My father would say, you know, is there any way to accelerate the line a little bit? I've got a plane to catch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it's like you know. <laughs> well, Pam, if I may say so, uh, uh -oh. does not particularly like waiting in line. Oh, I hate waiting. So I do all the errands, and um, sometimes uh, they would wonder where I was because I was going to X number of stores. I was like, where is he? But what happens is, as a New Yorker, when I go into places, I end up having conversations. Yes. Or mm -hmm. dry cleaner, whoever it is. All of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, right. And that becomes sort of my material, too, quite frankly. I mean, I don't do it consciously, but I mean, you know, how can Conversationalist, I yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah, that's probably why I'm in this industry is the, uh, and that's why I call these conversations, not interviews. Tell us about the movie, the book, the CD, the stage performance, and then you're out in five minutes. Conversations, people people really get a chance to, like we're meet each, meeting each other for the first time and we've uh, created this sort of connection through this conversation. The viewers feel invested and involved and they comment throughout the show as well. And and that's really a full circle conversation. And I think we've we've sort of been going away from that. And so that's why a lot of people say we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. Mm -hmm. I know no other way. That's the way I would want to do it where it's a conversation versus just a typical clinical right. interview. I think it has more depth and feeling to it when it's a conversation and people like to listen in on conversations and they're warmer and more open and authentic and connective when it's a conversation. At least that's how I've always felt, even off air, not even in my professional work, but just in normal conversation, you know. One of my friends said, boy, you and my sister are similar. Boy, when you have when you have these conversations, it's it's like you're you're interviewing. You're always asking and you're so curious. And I say, you know what? 
a lot of times, especially in my professional work, when I'm asking questions, I'm asking them to bring out the guest, but also so the audience can benefit and maybe ask questions that the audience wishes that they can ask. But a lot of times I'm also asking questions for myself. You may answer something about how you handled something or about how you went through something in your life or how you're excited about something. And I might be able to connect with that because there's something similar that I'm experiencing. And by your answers, it sort of enriches me um, in some of this. So I see it as like a back and forth uh, situation. We're all, I might be the host who's conducting the orchestra, but we're all here as equals and we're all sharing and it's like a wonderful tennis match. That's how I look at it. That's my story and I'm not changing it. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. Are who you are. <laughs> That's right. I am who I am. <laughs> exactly right. What are some other things you guys are very excited about that uh, coming up, you know, the new year and new things happening, um, some things that uh, you have happening that you're, you're looking forward to? Well, this movie, really, that our well, daughter's writing, yeah. right? Guest we, appearances, we, the movie. Yeah, that's yeah. right. We or it could be the Christmas movie. Yeah. We don't know yet. She's also um, what? writing something that we're going to be in that will be oh, at yes. a theater. Yes. So that'll be fun. That's going to be real. We're playing ourselves again, the parents. And I, in her thing. I mentioned that in passing to her the other day, something about that. And she said, and you will be at the rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> and I did a short film recently called Pre-Pro that will do the festival circuit. And there's another one that I did. I seem to be the short film queen at the moment um, called Turning Point, where I play DJ Qualls. I don't know if people know that name. Um, his mom. And it's a zombie movie <laughs> so i'm the zombie killer mom and <laughs> ballet dancer mom uh yeah so that's cool huh that's taking on a whole other persona and yes, the whole thing we're mostly excited about liz's uh guest appearances oh and our son produced a movie called um sid is dead syd is dead and we just heard yesterday it has distribution a streaming distribution but i don't know um, oh fantastic and our yeah. daughter Liz is in it. It was filmed upstate yeah. New York, actually. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. Where was it? I forget. Anyway, we weren't there. So, you know, not allowed yeah. to. <laughs> right. So, uh, you've done a lot of casting over the years, uh, Pamela. Do you enjoy that too, casting? I do, but it was hampered by the fact because since I was six years old, I wanted to be an actress. Yeah. So, when it was kind of heartbreaking when I would be on a, a casting job. And there would be a part that I could play. And nine times out of 10, the director would ask me to play it, but the mm -hmm. producers would not want that conflict of interest. So I couldn't do it. So there was one time when I was literally in costume and the producer walked in and said, no, 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 you're not doing that part. So um, anyway, so there was the heartbreak of it, but I, I was really good at it. And it also, um, when I kind of scaled back, cause there was a period of our lives where I chose to be home with the kids instead of pursuing the casting career since it wasn't where my heart was, you know? Um, and that was, it turns out to have been a really good decision because we have these great kids, but um, yeah. maybe they would have been great if I continued working, but who, you know, we'll never know. But um, yeah. So I kind of segued out of it. I would cast again if somebody wanted me to, but it would take kind of a lot to, you know, have me, not act and do that. So See? acting comes, you, the casting is there, but the acting is really. It was, it's where my heart is. For you is where your heart is, right? The great thing that happened is when I was going off literally on location and we would all go, mm -hmm. you had invariably some parts in those yes, movies. Yes, that happened. And did. we met on a movie yeah. we were acting in in Mexico and fell in love. What so, was the movie? Called Assassin. Don't look for it. Don't look for it. <laughs> no, I don't know. We don't know where it is anymore. It's so, a, it's yeah. a, a love story. <laughs> it's at a library in Islip. <laughs> he was he was trying he was playing the bad guy who was trying to kill my senator husband, and uh, so we had very few scenes together. Although he was trying to kill you know the guy anyway. And then there's the there was story. a famous yeah, story where her character's name was Claire, and I say. Claire or something, something. And the director said, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? He said, you're the bad guy. It sounds like you're in love with her. And I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He couldn't hide it. I couldn't it was hide very it. cute. Yeah. What was it, Nicholas, that you saw in her when you were on that film that just drew you to Pam? The first day there were there, there was a production issue in Mexico, and I got into a taxi cab with her to go to an archaeology museum. And I don't know why, but sitting next to her in the cab, I never wanted to be apart from her again after that moment. <laughs> And, Why? and she know. found it very annoying. Like at very the museum, annoying. I was like behaving like her husband. He was, <laughs> was standing like, too close to me. I thought, oh, this guy is trouble, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and he has been. <laughs> but there was fun. It was fun. And he has been. Because of the production problem, there was another actor who we loved. And the three of us were like the three musketeers. And we would go on the rooftop of this hotel where we were staying and sing Beatles songs. And it was just like a number of weeks of just laughing. And yeah. A good time. So we got to know each other, yeah. which had that circumstance not been exactly. you know, there, yeah. we wouldn't have known each other and we probably wouldn't have fallen in love right. or just maintained a relationship. Right. What know? was it about Nicholas for you, Pamela? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. It was, I mean, I started out and really not liking him at all. And then <laughs> over the course of this time, I just, I fell in love. I mean, how do you ever explain that? You yeah. know, I don't. There's not one single thing. It's just he's a very, very good person. You That's know, key. Yeah. Very kind, you know, um, a little self-involved, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> who isn't? But that's and, another brilliant thing. Somebody <laughs> like this will talk and I'll say something and they'll say, it's not about you. <laughs> and to be reminded, this is really a great thing in life, actually, to have somebody yeah. who's honestly telling you and telling you. Just to go back for a second, because I can't stop. Uh, Stella Alexander was at my teacher, and she was a genius. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And you know how we were talking about, I'm talking, I'm talking. I was standing with her, about to leave uh, the studio where we were, near Carnegie Hall. And I started to say something to her, and she said, you need to be quiet, Nicholas. Yes. And when I got on stage to try something, she said, don't move. Now start the scene. I mean, she was brilliant, but she got you to, you know, she was able to rein you in, rein me in. Yes. I and notice you've had a lot of people who've whispered to you over the years. <laughs> <laughs> There's a the theme here, <laughs> right? Anthony Perkins. I mean, they, everybody whispered to you. <laughs> <laughs> Not so <sure>, but, but <laughs> very funny. Oh, yeah. That's great. So, so things are good. Life is good. And uh, how long have you been together now, you guys? How many years now has it been? 34, I think. 34, 33 married. 30, yeah. It's flies right. by in a New York minute, doesn't it? <laughs> it it does. does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. But so, I mean, really, we're very, needless to say, we're very, very blessed. We're just really grateful for having been able to have the adventures, you know. And mostly now, grateful for the grandson. Massively. Yes, right. Luke, yeah. right? Yeah. Just, yeah. What a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. He's with us. Sometimes do, do you lot. see some, is, do you see is Luke oh, yeah. going to be going into this field? And is Luke it's already like, whispering to you, uh, uh, Nick? <laughs> no, he's a performer. He'll be, he loves to run and he'll be running around the house like, the, you know, a cir circular pattern. And then he'll all of a sudden take a prat pratfall, you know, and then we have to go, oh, no, and applaud. Yeah, we have to applaud. Yeah. <laughs> where does this kid get this? It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have no idea where he got it. <laughs> yeah. So, so cute. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the apple and a tree. Tiny. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, this really has been fantastic. Uh, I'd love to ask each of you, what are some of the, you've already shared some of it. I'll start with you, Pamela. What are some of the blessings and joys in your life that give you great satisfaction for what you're doing and the desire to continue doing it? Wow, that's a really loaded question. Well, the grandson, obviously, of us, as I just shared, we also are fortunate very right now to be living in this space right overlooking the ocean. So this is something we've always wanted. And uh, here we are um, renting this lovely little apartment. And um, so there's that. Um, being in a community really of creative people and 
feeling really for the first time a part of it. I always felt on the outside. I had terrible what the kids call FOMO, fear of missing out. And now I don't feel I'm missing out. I feel I have been always in the right place at the right time. You know, very blessed life. I love that I'm able to use the worst thing that happened to me in my life to help other people. And that's very gratifying. And um, I I don't want to say I wouldn't change it. Of course, I wouldn't. I'm in a club that you don't want to ever join, meaning the Survivors Club. But um, the work that I've been able to do has been incredibly gratifying. And when I see somebody somebody's life better. And I'm just told the other day, one of the leading actresses in Wakanda um, said that the industry has really changed as a result of my work. So isn't that great? That's fantastic. It's just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. How about you, Nick? How about uh, well, you as far as your blessings and joys that keep you going? It's the, the family, uh, the grandson. I mean, it me. Just, <laughs> just kidding. At the top of the list. Oh, really. stop. No, it's, I'm just it's, kidding. It's actually true, though. Um, Did you kick his foot on the bottom? I saw him move. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe scissors. I think it was scissors. Um, no, I mean, we're just, we are so lucky to yeah. have. And But there are these um, blessings that have happened in the last few years. Like, I had never done a Broadway show, you know, and so to so suddenly have that experience, I'd always... I pretended in a way that I, it didn't matter, but it, when I got the job, it was just bliss, actually. You, you know, were to be in so my happy. own. I was so happy every day. Um, I continue to be made very happy. I mean, if there's food, <laughs> if there's a voiceover thing, you know, I'm 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 lucky in that regard. You know, it's, I'm I'm easily made happy. You I are, think. yes. Uh, um, and. Um, the other thing that just happened maybe two years ago, I think I've already lost track is uh, I got into the um, Motion Picture Academy, you know, after all these years. And uh, that's the absolute bliss going to these screenings and just being at ease and talking to people who have been in the film or directing. And uh, there is this community. Yeah. There is. And um, and there's this one uh, couple, for example, a lot of the screenings at their house, and we feel like already family with them, you know? It's pretty remarkable, it's I lovely. have to say. Yeah. yeah, we're at a good time in our lives. It's a sweet spot, yes, a it sweet is. spot. And and somebody who knew about sweet spots and had that longevity seasoned vet veteran too, who usually pops in towards the latter part, Mr. George Burns is here. Oh. <laughs> Um, he, he always pops in. He's got his cigar. He's got his red yes. pocket square. My aunt uh, in Connecticut, she collected dolls. My mother's the youngest of 16. Big, big family. And we would come up from New York up to New England and spend about a month every summer to see all the family up wow. there. And uh, she was still, you know, all these years, always a big collector of dolls. I mean, had a room dedicated to it, really expensive collectible dolls. This got passed down to me and uh, we put them on two years ago during a nostalgic episode and everybody, the viewers fell in love with them. So he pops in and uh, he sends you his uh, love and uh, blessing from him and from uh, Gracie. He loved the conversation. He thought it was terrific. It was uh, not only informative and warm and authentic, but uh filled with levity and levity. And uh, yeah, he said, he said, you guys knocked it out of the park. George mm -hmm. Burns in the house. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Thanks, George. Thank you, George. Ever get a chance to be in his presence at all through the years? No, but no. one person who I think of in a similar light was Art Carney. Oh, yes. And he yeah. was soft spoken. He was just like one of my heroes, you know? Yes. George hangs down below. He's like an associate producer. He's got his martini down below with a cigar collection. Uh, Art lived in the town next to Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn, of course, lived in Old Saybrook. He lived in Westbrook, Connecticut. And they said he, he was a regular guy. Yes. You know, and uh, very approachable. And he would go into the sandwich shop in town and pull up in his black Camaro. And uh, just, you know, hi, how are you? And uh, yeah, which is yeah. really, really cool, you know, to be, to have that kind of personality. And he was very approachable, which is really, really nice. And 
Yeah. Congratulations really on everything. These, these uh, incredible careers, all these wonderful opportunities you've had and, you know, giving us all of this great entertainment through, through it all and your daughter and your son, you know, doing their thing too. And, guest appearances again look for that movie coming out this is the web series and again if they want to check out the web series where do they go guest appearances web series.com perfect perfect yeah, 12 are there so. and that's exciting right you guys and to be involved in it too huh very, yes. yeah it really yeah, is we're very proud of her yeah you know yeah you think she'll watch this? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> she knows we're proud of her. She doesn't have to watch it. That's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So if you explain to us how to find your show, then we'll we'll send it around. So yeah, that's that's it. that would be yeah. wonderful. It's really been fun. Yes, it's great thank you, you, Jim. Really, You're thank great. you very much. It'll be right on our YouTube channel, which is Jim Masters TV. Okay. And uh, we'll send the link along and oh. uh, you can put it on social media and promote it. So, yeah, yeah, the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, where we house hundreds of other episodes. And, um, uh, yeah, it's really cool. And I'm on all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Gym Masters TV. And uh, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with the both of you, Pam and Nick. Oh, it's been so Thanks great. For Thank you very much. Caring and being there for And us. have a great uh, trip to uh, Florida. Yes. Holidays. Great holiday, yeah. Thank you very much. And blessing and joy for the holidays and the new year for you and your family as well. And thanks for the uh, the wonderful comments. And as my father told us when we were kids, he would always give this sage advice, this old school advice, even as kids. And still today says, whenever anybody says something kind or nice to you, Jim, ask them to please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, that's great. Very, Very good advice. Very that's it. That's it. You guys be well. Best of the holidays and the new year. We'll keep the porch light on for you. You're welcome back on the Gym Masters Show series anytime. And thanks for spending uh, all the time with us here and stopping by the show. Truly, thoroughly appreciated it. Thank um, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Hopefully we'll see you again soon, maybe in person somewhere on the East Coast or West Coast. Never know. Fred, that would be fabulous. Wonderful. Best of everything to you guys. Thanks for all the time. Bye. Take care. Thank much. You. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye. Pamela and Nicholas Guest here on the Gym Masters Show Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. What a great conversation. Fabulous people. Multi-talented, funny, witty and uh, really, really cool. Really cool to have uh, them both here on the show. Uh, actor, actress, producers. Of course, Pamela does the casting. Just really awesome to have them here on the show. We got a chance to learn so much more about their backgrounds, why they love what they're doing. Their kids are involved in the industry as well, which is beautiful. And just so nice to have uh, them spend some time with us here on the show. They tr really are seasoned veterans in this industry and they love what they do and uh, they're funny together too, aren't they? Some of the yin and yang in the back and forth is absolutely hilarious. I thoroughly enjoyed having Pamela and Nicholas Guest, these uh, fantastic actors, actresses, producers, extraordinaire. So many shows, movies, films they've been involved in. Guest appearances, again, the web series, Go to guestappearanceswebseries.com to learn about um, the incredible web series that their daughter Elizabeth created that they're in as well. And, uh, and there's going to be a movie made. Isn't that cool too? A movie made from guest appearances. I think that is really, really something special. This was terrific, gang. Thanks for all the great comments. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of our Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show series, The Gym Masters Show. Always a pleasure putting these together for you, uh, bringing these guests in who stop by our show and uh, they celebrate life. They celebrate what they're working on and what they've done. And I love that. If you enjoyed it, give this episode a uh, thumbs up. Definitely give it a thumbs up on our YouTube channel right next to the episode. And leave a comment for us as well. Give this a like you know, on the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, where you're seeing this episode. Give it a like. Leave a comment for us as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. We'd really appreciate that. That doesn't cost anything. Just click that red subscribe button. And uh, yeah, you're in. 
As always, gang, we don't say goodbye around here. We say see you later, ciao, cheers, hasta la vista, buenas noches, cheerio, slancha, shalom, uh, avida zain, sayonara, uh, moi loop. We say all of that. We also say don't forget to relax. Yeah, don't forget to relax, take care of one another and love one another and take care of yourself. Best of the holiday season to you and yours. Yes, once again, a continued Merry Christmas. Uh, happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, and um, a very, very happy, happy new year. May this year be a beautiful one for you, for me, for us. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time. We'll be right here. Uh, stick with us for more great episodes and more extraordinary guests coming up for you right here on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, and the Jim Masters Show Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. If you want to binge, it's a good time to binge watch, you know, this time of the year. Binge watch our episodes. There are hundreds of them. You can see on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. All right. We love you all. Thanks for being with us, spending time with us on this episode. Again, we thank Nicholas and Pamela Guest for joining us uh, from Los Angeles, from Hollywood. Really cool people and uh, so many wonderful things that they've done, they continue to do, and that are coming up in their life. And uh, just so really nice. Uh, they are definitely lovities here on the Gym Masters show for sure, right? As are all of you. Be well. Happy holidays again. And thanks for joining us. If you want to know the next episodes that are coming up, just take a look at our YouTube channel. Scroll through. You can see guests that are coming up. And you can also watch past episodes of our series as well. All right. Happy everything. Happy and merry. We'll see you again soon right here on the Gym Masters show. Take care and be well. Cheers.